Good afternoon, everybody. This is Wendy from Wendy's Parade of Perfumes. Here on my channel, I just talk about what I've been doing with my perfume, which this year isn't much because I'm on a no-buy. So this episode is going to be a no-buy update and just a few perfumes that I've been wearing, getting summer, uh, spring and summer started. And I'm going to try to answer a question asked of me from Expanse Floating. I'll do it at the very end. That way, whoever wants to turn off in the meantime can just shut off. So here I am. Uh, we are at, I am at over 100 days into my no-buy. And that also means that I am 25% done. So how am I feeling? I am feeling surprisingly good. One interesting thing that I've noticed is that I've been paying attention to perfume a lot less. Not even on purpose, but more as a byproduct of not constantly looking for the next thing. So my my wisdom from this so far, now the year is not over, I'm still an addict, I may have a relapse, but what I have noticed is that if you do want to take a little bit of break of a break from perfume, at least the chase and the insanity, um, if you can get yourself over the hump of buying shit, which is hard. You have to deal with the cravings. You have to deal with the want and the chase and the letting go. But if you can get yourself over that, what will naturally happen is that you will find yourself paying less attention. I still wear perfume almost every day. Not every day, not every night, not all the time. It's not, I'm not as obsessive, but I wear perfume every day. I still love it. It's still a wonderful part of my routine. It's still something that I love. It's still something I, I still think about and contemplate and everything like that. But I don't have that focus that I used to have, which is good. So that's a good thing. Uh, number two, from what I have noticed, and we're not going to get into this today, but perfume is too expensive and it's too much. I don't like all of the releases, how can you even, it, it just becomes like so overloading that you just shut down. So it's too much and it's too expensive and it's just, it's a little bit turning into a, I think Claire Smith addressed this. She has a episode on her channel about perfume becoming fast fashion. And yeah, instead of being thoughtful or an art form or an expression, it's just becoming fast fashion, just like everything else. And none of it is that great. I did sample um, Green Stravaganza from Valentino Donna from the Born in Roma line. Because I admit, I love Valentino Donna Born in Roma. Um, I actually have to dig that out for spring because I haven't really worn it this winter. But I'm an unabashed fan of that fragrance. Valentino Donna Born in Roma. Love that one. Um, I tried the Green Stravaganza because it was supposed to have a, like a, a smoky note and a jasmine note and a lapsing souchong tea note. And... If they could actually make a perfume with those notes in it, that would be great. Uh, this fragrance, to me, it was just a very bright citrusy jasmine. Uh, didn't really deliver on the Lapsang Souchong. It didn't really deliver on like the smoky notes or it wasn't very interesting. So I don't need to think about that one again. It was pretty, but again, it's just, I have, I have a million perfumes that smell like that. Y'all have smelled a million perfumes that smell like that. It's just not necessary. Uh, so that's where I'm at on my no-buy. Um, I am thinking, I, I know, I, and now that I've done this no-buy, I have so much perfume that I'm almost getting these weird cravings to do a massive um, a massive declutter, but I'm not going to do that because I always regret those. I'll probably declutter a few at the end of the year, but um, I'm not going to go crazy. I decluttered some books. I decluttered some nail polish. I decluttered a whole trunk full of clothes recently, which that felt good, but... My perfume's going to stay with me, especially since the perfume industry is so, it's so fickle. You know, I, once I give it away, I may not be able to get it back. So 100 days, over 100 days, 25% done. And I, I have a feeling that the next quarter is going to go pretty fast too. And I've been good. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any sins to report as far as that goes. So real quick, just because we have to have some bottles and what we're wearing. This isn't really a spring list. This is nothing Nothing like that, but just what I've been wearing. Some of these you've seen before. Uh, some of these I've been neglecting because that's fun too. I have to go and dig into my shelf of, you know, stuff I bought one, two, three years ago and I've either not worn or worn once. This perfume, let's start with Miller Harris, has been on my shelf for years. This is Fleur's de Bois 
and Flowers of the Woods in lovely sparkling Shepra. Um, very citrus hit on the top. Um, some like rain washed florals in the middle and some a little bit of oak moss and sandalwood and um, a little bit of vetiver on the bottom. So it's a little earthy on the bottom. I always considered this to be kind of like a sheep run structure. I always kind of thought of, I don't know why I always think of this, this and aromatics elixir, but the thing that this is lacking, even though I think that um, patchouli is listed as a note on here, but it doesn't have that like patchouli heaviness. It's really light and bright and it's so citrus top heavy and the florals are really beautiful and the dry down, even though it's a little bit woody, but it's not, I don't know, basement forest floor woody. It's just kind of woody. It's pretty. Anyway, I've been wearing this for the spring, uh, the totally unisex, androgynous, what have you, uh, Fleur de Bois from Miller Harris. This is an old one. And I always thought that this was, they were going to stop making this, but this is still around if anybody wants to sample it. Um, much newer from Miller Harris is Lost in the City. This is kind of like Miller Harris 2.0. Lost in the City Eau de Parfum. Uh, I've been really enjoying wearing this for spring. This is a little bit of black currant and rhubarb. So it has a, this like bitter, bitter fruit on the top and a little bit of rose in the middle and a little bit of like a tea. It has it, it has a very slight tinge of a tea note. I think the listed note is all gray, but a little bit of like roses and tea. And this also has a little bit of moss on the bottom, but it's not super mossy. It's not like cheaper level of moss or anything like that. But this is just an easy breezy. The, the pink says it all. It's just an easy breezy girly perfume. It's great for when it's warm out. It's been a little bit warm here the last couple of days. So uh, this is one that I've been enjoying wearing. It's nothing that's blowing my mind, but it's a, uh, it's natural. It's pretty, it's roses and citrus and some moss and some tea. So I like that one. Uh, one I've been playing around with, I got this on my shelf, felt relatively recently. This is a men's perfume from Hermes uh, Equipage Geranium. I think the uh, original Equipage came out a couple decades ago. It's like a more, it's an older Hermes perfume uh, reworked. And this is gonna be a little bit masculine for some people. I love that, I don't know why, like that, that dude on the horse and I don't know, I like the picture behind, but. Uh, okay, so real quick without doing a full review, this is very masculine. It's soapy, it's spicy, it's leathery, and the heart note is, it's supposed to be geranium, but I also smell a little bit of carnation, which I think is from the original. And it ha being Hermes, it has a gorgeous sandalwood dry down. It does not smell like Ambroxan. It does not smell like Isoe Super. I think this was done from uh, Jean-Claude Alena. So it has, even though it's a very masculine in structure perfume, but it's done with a light hand. So I do like wearing it. Um, but yeah, I should do a review on this one. This is a, this is special. Very barbershoppy because of like that leathery, that leathery soapy thing that's been going on, but kind of been playing with that one. All right, this one is really bad because I bought this years ago and I never wore it. This is the only perfume I have from this company, um, Exidolo, and this is their 33. Okay, uh, yeah, again, it's a good thing I'm on a no-buy because this is a very beautiful rose perfume that I should not have been ignoring. Um, relatively reasonable in price. This is one ounce. It is an extrait and it's like $125. Not cheap, but not, you know, in the $400 ridiculous range. So this perfume is interesting because it has, it is roses and it's iris and it has some oud in it. And it has a slightly odd top note. I thought it was rubbery and synthetic. And lo and behold, when I went to Fragrantica and looked at the top notes, there is a rubber note. Um, and, you know, to be fair, rubber is not actually synthetic. Rubber comes from trees. And without those trees, we cannot get rubber. But, you know, we associate it with, you know, manufactured goods. I think that's why it kind of comes off as smelling synthetic, but it's not synthetic. It's a natural substance. So anyway, be that as it may, this, this perfume 33 is a rubber note, but holy moly, the roses are just jammy and proliferative they will just fly off your skin it's a really strong rose perfume which is right up my alley and uh the iris is nice and earthy it's a little bit leathery it's a little bit oody so 
it's really gorgeous and I cannot believe I've been ignoring it. So it's good that I'm not chasing the next thing and I'm just taking a step back and looking at my shelf. So this is a nice discovery that I've had on my shelf for a criminal amount of time that I've been ignoring. Um, you guys can give me grief for that because I'm a bad person ignoring these gorgeous perfumes that I already have on my shelf. So this is 33 from Exidolo. And last one, to be fair, I've had this for a hot minute and I have not been wearing it too much. This, oh, hopefully I can do this. This is Anikutal. This is Lyle, oh, sorry, Leo Alte, uh, the Island of Tea, I think. Um, L apostrophe, I-L-E, A-U, T-H-E. So Lyle Alte. Um, last year, I was obsessed with wearing um, Le Tom de Reeves, which is a white floral and wet orange blossom. So I did not quite get to this because I got those two at, these two at the same time. Uh, this is the citrus green tea and mate and um, a little bit of like hay and straw on the bottom. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this is like Elizabeth Arden Green Tea 1999, but Enda Kutalik does it and it's better. This is a gorgeous green tea citrus perfume done in a very light and fashion. fashion. They're, they're not powerhouses. They don't last forever. Um, they're done in a very delicate manner. I like that aesthetic from them. And uh, yeah, um, anyone that misses the way Elizabeth Arden green tea used to smell, but even is like even nicer than that used to be because it doesn't smell very good anymore. They reformulated it, but this is your girl. I like this. And it's, it's in a good tall. It just, it smells natural and beautiful. All right. So that's what I've been up to. That's what I've been doing. Truthfully, I've been a little bit distracted and uh, I had a, this entire rose list that I was working on and I lost it. So I'm going to have to take a step back and work on that again. I don't, I don't know what happened. I was cleaning and I probably just pitched it. I was all organized to do this, uh, this secondary rose list and uh, it's, it's not happening anytime soon. So I just wanted to come back for an update and that's the end of that part. Um, Expense Floating asked me this question. Do you, I have, she, uh, they said, I really like Bois but I have never worn Samsara. Do you think that they're that alike? She, they didn't use the word, she, they didn't use the word dupe. But they were like, what do you think? So I've been thinking about this too much <laughs> because I still don't think about perfume a lot. I've been thinking about this way too much. So Vaudeville was originally came out in the 1920s. It, it's considered to be almost like a landmark woody perfume because before then and even after then for many years, they didn't make like singularity like woody perfumes that are like singularly woody for women. They didn't market that to them. So it's that perfume at that time was a sandalwood based fragrance. I have never smelled that in vintage and I probably never will. It's one of those perfumes that when people bought them, they used them up. They never got onto the gray market. They never got resold. It's pretty, I've looked and it's pretty much not available. If that ever comes up in vintage, it is like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The only Bois de Zille from Chanel that I've ever smelled is the Less Exclusives. I do have a decant of the Eau de Toile and I have a bottle of the Eau de Parfum. So that's what I'm working with when I just, when I talk about that Chanel perfume. Samsara is the opposite. That only came out in 1989. It's also considered to be a landmark woody perfume for women, but that is very accessible, very on the market. And I have a ton of that in vintage and I have a ton of that in the red bottles. And I've gone up through the B bottle, which I smelled and I did not like, and I have not smelled the most um, current version. Supposedly it's pretty good, but I don't know. I have a, I have so much of the old stuff that I may never smell what they're putting on the market now. So what do they have in common? Um, Samsara and Bois are both sandalwood heavy perfumes. Back in the day, they used to use, they both used to use Mysore. That is not really available anymore. Um, so there's that. They both used to have a sandalwood base that both the perfume companies, Guerlain and Chanel have had to, they've had to change it. I mean, that's just the way it is. They don't make, Mysore sandalwood is not very widely available anymore. But there is other sandalwood available though. And it smells like sandalwood. It smells good. It's just not what it used to be. The other thing that they have in common is that they have a gourmand aspect. At least the Eau de Toilette that I have from Chanel for Bois it smells, I put it on my, I just did a little spray for this. It's a little bit spicy. Uh, there's actually a gingerbread note. And yeah, it's like a little bit spicy, a little bit gingery. 
a little bit chocolatey almost, a little bit clovey. It just smells like a spiced cookie, like not sweet. And you know, y'all, I don't like gourmand perfumes very much, but it smells like baking spices, like a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of clove, along with the woods. Um, I, not to get too confusing here, but now that's the Eau de Toilette. For Bois de Zille on the Eau de Parfum, that gourmand aspect is not as prominent, but what is very prominent is there's a ton of ylang ylang in it. And Samsara also has a ton of ylang ylang in it. That's for the Eau de Parfum. So it really depends on what you have to answer your question. Um, with the Eau de Parfum, I haven't smelt it in a couple of, maybe I haven't even worn that perfume in a year, but um, it's kind of light and floating and there's a lot of ylang ylang and the woods that they have to use now are, they're, they more veer on the woody side and less on the sandalwood side. It's recognizable as sandalwood, but it's not like this is sandalwood. But that's where they both crisscross. They both, in all forms, have... Um, so now Samsara, the gourmand aspects of Samsara are not really spicy, though. But they are like Samsara has a lot of vanilla. Samsara almost has a weird like banana smell. And I think it's from the Yang Ylang. And then Samsara also has a very... Because I'm wearing Samsara today. It has a almost like baked creme brulee scent. But Samsara is so much more floral. Like, Wadaziel has some of the ylang ylang, and so does Samsara, but Samsara also has violet, has carnation, has jasmine. That's the predominant, um, uh, that's the dominant floral. There's rose. I mean, it's truly, a land, it's truly an oriental floral in every aspect because there is just so many flowers in Samsara. Jasmine being the dominant one, but especially in the older bottles, um, there's just so many flowers on top. So while Samsara, you know, reference sandalwood, right? But at the same time, Samsara also has so much more going on. It has like a gourmand aspect. It has a bergamot aspect. It has a green aspect. And it has that kitchen sink of flowers. Um, the dry down too, along with the sandalwood, it's pretty heavy in vanilla, probably because it's a Guerlain. And that's just what, you know, if you're Guerlain, you have to put a lot of vanilla on there. That being said, though, when you're looking for the sandalwood, that's where they also connect. That's where they also kind of cross the street at the same time because they are so sandalwood heavy. Um, I think that if I think that if you like one, you're going to like the other. But I think that I do not think that they're dupes, though. And I don't I don't think that having Samsara means that you're covered for Bodazil. And I don't think that. Bois is in the same category even as Samsara because I don't consider Bois to be what we used to call an oriental floral. I don't think that Bois does that. I think Bois is a little bit more streamlined and a little bit simpler and a little bit less complicated and kind of gets to the point faster. Also, at least in the Eau de Toilette, um, there's all those spices in there that Samsara to me is not spicy. There's, there's no clove and like cinnamon and like, you know, cookie ingredients in that one except for possibly the vanilla I guess but while it has gourmand aspects they're not like spicy gourmand you know so that's the best as I can explain it and especially since you know it's really hard to con I've never really done this thought exercise before but two perfumes that are so old yet still on the market and so loved too I mean people people love Bois de Zille, people love Samsara I'm certainly not the only one that loves Samsara um, but they've been on the market for so long and luckily they're still available, but you know, if something is available for that long, they're going to have changes just because things, things happen. You know, the Samsara that came out in 89 is not the same as today. The Samsara, the Bois that came out in, you know, 1920 something is obviously not going to be the same hundred years able. That's just not even possible. So it's really hard to compare and contrast the two. So I think that if you're talking about sandalwood perfumes, you can talk about them both at the same time, but they're not, they're not in a, interchangeable by any stretch of the imagination. Does that help? <laughs> that was completely off. Usually sometimes when I do stuff like that, I'll actually write things down and make little like columns and stuff. But that was just me thinking about this question for the last couple of weeks so I could address it. So 
Anyway, uh, expanse floating. I hope that that was helpful. <laughs> but tell me what y'all been up to. I am going to get back on track because I still love my perfume. So I just, I just worry, not that I'm worried because, you know, I have no skin in the the influencer game here on YouTube. But, you know, so many channels are just like, this is new, that is new, I have a haul, this is what I'm getting, this is new, this is what I think of all these new perfumes. And the only per the only perfume I've smelled this year that that's new is that green stravaganza from Valentino Donna, like that's it. So anyway, yeah, because I function on what's on my shelf. In Wendy's Parade, I just have my parade perfume and that's that's what I am working with. Anyway, happy spring, everybody. Spring has sprung here. Even though spring was trying to sprung in uh, February, and luckily that stopped, and now it feels more normal that it's in the 70s and it's April at least. So I hope you all have a nice day, and write me whatever you want in the comment section, and I will get back to you. Bye-bye.